Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Rich. Um, we just had another hot time in the Lord. We're still dealing with this connectivity issue series. Today was the final uh, part of the OPP series, which was operating powerless in position. Um, I need us to understand that God is the way. God is the truth. He's the light. But he's our direct connect, right? So we got to make sure that we stay connected to God and be careful and mindful of the other things we're connected to. Please make sure, if you haven't done so already, check us out online on Facebook, on YouTube, and better yet, come into the building. We would love to see you here with us on Sunday, 308 West 3rd Street, the Christian Church of Chester. We love you, and we'll see you soon. We don't go through things for nothing. You go through so that God can get glory, but also so you can know exactly what it is you've grown in. It also shows you where you still need some work. But when you go through, I need you to understand that through means it's behind you. First, giving honor to God. Because people like that stuff. You know, you got to give them the formalities first. First, giving honor to God. Not even first. I'm only giving honor to God. Because it's through him I move, live, breathe, have my being. So I thank God this morning for another opportunity to stand in front of his sheep. God, move me out the way because this ain't about me. God, I ask that you touch the hearts of your people right now. God, I ask that anything that is distracting them, whether it's mentally, physically, or emotionally, God, that you put it on hold. Matter of fact, that you move it out of the way so that they can hear your word, so that their hearts can be pricked, so that they can be set free, so that they can be healed, so that they can be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you in advance because I believe it's already done. And you told me I didn't have to wait till the battle was over that I could shout right now. So I shout out hallelujah and I praise your holy name for everything that you've already done. It is in the marvelous and matchless name of Jesus the Christ. I pray and I say thank you. Connectivity issues. Connectivity issues. Some of us connected to the wrong stuff. We've been talking about connectivity issues for about three weeks now, maybe even four. And some of us still ain't got the message. Because we justify our connections. John 15 and 5 says what? Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Every time I read that, I wait for somebody to go shouting. You know why I wait for people to shout? Because it said will. It didn't say might. It didn't say maybe. If you do enough of this, then God said it. you will. We need to learn how to shout at the promises of God. He said, as long as you stay connected to me, you will. You will. So even if you feel fruitless right now, I need you to know that you will. Let me say it this way. It might be all hell and chaos breaking loose in your life. But God said, even in the midst of that, there's a promise on your life that as long as you with me, you will. So in other words, don't worry about what it feel like. Don't get hooked up on what it look like because you will. For apart from me, you could do nothing. For apart from me, you could do nothing. See, I know that at some point in your life, some man or some woman told you, what you gonna do without me? 
You ain't nothing without me. And I came to tell you, they are bold-faced liars. Because the last time I checked, there's only one God. And God said, apart from him, you could do nothing. So apart from them, you probably could do everything. <laughs> That's all free. I was just trying to help. So we was in 1 Samuel last week, but we started off this series with infringement on my fruit. Then it was, it costs too much to carry you. Then it was when I move, you move. Last week, we was all down, or at least understood, OPP. Operating powerless in position. I hope this is helping somebody. I need you to know your title don't mean nothing. Your title is man given. Let me help him a little further. The only title we all got is servant. We all want to be big and bad till it's time to do the work. Everybody wants the title till something go wrong. And then you see a lot of this. And I was led to believe that when you got the title, what you really signed up for was be the first person to take the hit. Back in the day when it was war, the general went out first because he understood that this is my army and I'm a lead it. So when the, so when it pop off, I'm out front. Stop saying you the leader if we can't ever find you. Stop saying you in charge if when it hit the fan, you get out the way. Stop saying you the leader if you're not proactively thinking. Ain't nothing worse than a reactive leader. We done already got punched on and now you want to do something. Last week, we was in Samuel, chapter 13, verse 7 to 14. And it says, meanwhile, Saul stayed in Gilgal, and his men were trembling with fear. Saul waited there seven days for Samuel, as Samuel had instructed him earlier, but Samuel still didn't come. Saul realized his troops were slipping away. So I'm the leader, and I'm watching my folks fall apart. So now I feel like because I got the title, I got to do something. But that ain't what God said do. See, because even when you get the title, God is still in control. Last week, we had some points. Principle number one, thank him for the direct connect. And we talked about Israel begging for a king. Let me help y'all. They were begging for a king out of fear. But they already had God as their ruler and leader. You begging for somebody to help you out of fear. And God is already saying, I got you. But God is so gentlemanly. He said, cool, I'll give y'all what y'all want. But he also was looking at him going, why would you want to put extension cords in between me and you? Why would you want to mess up this direct connect? Let me talk the way y'all talk. Since y'all know what Bills is, then I feel like y'all can talk to y'all about what this is. Even I know what Bills is, so I ain't going to say nothing. I know what Bills is. Everybody like 28, 31. He said, Bills ever said, oh. He should have said bills from the beginning. I learned in life, when you put a middleman in something, it complicates matters. It, it destroys the genuineness of what you hear. 
because there's somebody in between you talking. And we all know that when messages are passed, they get messed up as they go further and further along. And God is telling Israel, y'all are directly connected to me and y'all want to put a king in between me and you. Do you realize, Goofy, that I still control the king? Principle number two, even after the warning, you still move forward. I was talking to my wife and I said they would never know this because they don't, you know, know all my business and they won't. I said, but when I shared that last week, I was talking about myself. God gave me the warning. He sent a lady that didn't know me, didn't know nothing about me. And she told me about my whole situation. And I was so young and dumb and just having fun in the sun, I got mad at her instead of listening to the word. Here's what I realized years later. The reason I got upset with her is because I wasn't connected to the messenger. God was sending me a message through a stranger. And I'm so silly, I got mad at a stranger who in retrospect don't know nothing about me. So really, how does she know all of this? And I got upset with her and walked into the fire. I walked in, I walked in Lucifer's house, sat on the couch, put my feet up, and I stayed a while. All because The warning didn't match what I wanted. Let me help you with something. God know you better than you. So when he sends somebody to give you a fair warning, just assume that he knows something you can't even see. He understands that this next decision is designed to take you out of here. And what he says is, you're my child and I love you, and I'm trying to protect you before you make a foolish decision. Don't get so high and mighty. Don't get, oh, Jesus. I learned something this morning, probably about 2 o'clock this morning, I was watching a sermon. And the pastor said, when he was talking about Jonah, he said the book of Jonah was never about Jonah. It was about Nineveh. And it was about Nineveh helping Jonah because Jonah and Nineveh had the same problem. And sometimes I need us to understand that God knows your problems even when you don't know your problem. See, you thought it was him or her. But the truth is it was your need to be needed. That's why you keep attracting bums because you think you can put them back together again. You ain't the maker. You ain't the manufacturer. That's why you keep attracting people that don't do nothing because you want to do everything. Sister Pat, I'm just trying to help. But even after the warning, they still move forward. Your king is going to enslave your children. Take your, your, your crops. Stick, take all your money. He, he going to take everything from you. And you go... That's cool. Nobody ever says that's cool, especially when people start playing in our pockets. Pockets short anyway. You ain't going to play in them. But they were told that, and they still move forward. Principle number three, God has bigger things in mind for you. <laughs> Saul was going to look for a lost donkey and end up walking into being the king. Let me help somebody who's struggling this morning. You believe in God for 500. God got 5 million. We, be, we believe in God for the 15, 50 an hour. And he said, I got a salary job with six figures. <laughs> Let 
Whatever your biggest thought is, God could trump that. He said, I see you a little 20 and I raise you 40. Shaking, pressed down, <laughs> running over. That's what he said. <laughs> Principle number four, even when you disagree, do what God said do. I can only speak about me, honey. I've disagreed with a lot God told me to do. Matter of fact, most of what he's told me to do, I was like, nope, not me. I need you to go preach. I will not. I need you to go teach. Not today. I need you to go and sit under some leadership. Mm -mm, can't do it. You're going to be a pastor. Who? Everything he told me to do. <sighs> say this. See, she know. She can speak to it because she knows. She watched me go through it. She would tell me every Sunday, don't blow your witness. Remember I told y'all that story? That's her. Every Sunday she would tell me, don't blow your witness. And after a while I got frustrated. I said, why do you keep telling me that? Go talk to him. But I realized what was happening. She wasn't saying it because of me and him. She was saying to me without saying, somebody's watching you. And if you do this wrong, you will mess it up for everybody. Even when you disagree, let me help y'all. I walked into church every Sunday and got ridiculed across the pulpit for three years. I left church more hurt than I ever walked in it. And I showed up every Sunday on time. I drove an hour and some change to get there and an hour and some change to get home. So when I hear people tell me they like church, but an hour is too far. Let me help y'all in advance. You talking to the wrong guy. Whatever you say, it sound like wah, 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 wah. What? You mean to tell me I can show up to get beat up and you can't show up to get blessed? I'm just trying to help. Even when you disagree, when you watch things falling apart and God say, don't open your mouth and you stay. <laughs> when, you, when your man pride kick in, and you start looking at your children and your family, you go, they looking at me like I'm soft out here. I need them to know this ain't that. And whenever I need to, daddy can turn it up and turn it on. And God said, you better not. Because if you do it that way, you contradict what it is I put on the inside of you. So even when you disagree, I'm going to help them a little bit further. You ready? Even when you disagree with me, don't turn your back on God. Because you know church folk got a habit of doing that. I stopped going to church because that man said this. Man at the club cussed you out last week and you showed up again. Bartender been watering down your drinks for months and you go back every week. It's funny to me how the only place we get offended and stop going is to the house of God. You get beat on every day at work, but you clock in on time. I'm just trying to help them. Principle number five. When God gives an assignment, he also gives signs. God loves you enough and he knows you so much. That even when you take a blind faith walk, he'll show you a little bit of something just to keep you going. He knows where you struggle. He knows the faith you lack. So he'll give you enough to get you going. And then he'll give you a little bit more to keep you going. He also wants you to understand that everything he says will be. 
That was the shout right there. Everything he said will be. Let me see if I can rephrase it. Everything he said is, it will be when you walk into it. Jesus, bars. Meaning it's already done. So God ain't in the lab working on nothing for you. It's already done. What he's waiting for you is to get enough faith to walk into it. But that was last week's lesson. It's just good this week. Chapter 10, we left off, and we was uh, dealing with, I think it was Samuel. Yeah, Samuel was talking to the, the, the children of Israel, and he brings them out. He says, I need everybody to come out by tribe, because I need to talk to y'all. And he proceeds to tell them how they picked the king, even though God was already their leader. Now, this is his second or third time mentioning this because I need y'all to, to understand something. He's doing what God said do, even though he disagrees. So every chance he gets, he shows up. He's in front of the people and he's telling them, I'm, I'm about to introduce you to your king. But I need y'all to know how bad y'all messed up. You know how people do. They're going to bless you, but they're going to rebuke you, too. They're going to bless you and curse you out the same mouth. You know how we do. I'm going to give you this $20, but I'm going to need you to know you've been borrowing from me for a while. And you ain't gave me the last 40 back, but I'm going to give you this 20. However, at some point, you're going to owe me a little interest on this. They're getting quiet. They know what I'm talking about. Not y'all, I'm just saying. But I need y'all to understand a couple things. And these ain't principles, these are just freebies, stuff that dropped in my mind. Saul was the people's choice. I'll say it again. Saul was the people's choice. God chose, and then the people chose. And God said, I'm a gentleman, I'm going to let y'all have what y'all want. He was the people's choice. Keep that in mind. Saul was the people's choice. In the midst of being chosen or being shown to the people, Saul is hiding. It said, I think it said he was in the luggage. The, the, the baggage. He was, he was deep in the baggage because he was being introduced as the next leader. And they said, well, where is he? Over there hiding in that luggage. Let me help y'all. God can call you even when you're covered in baggage. See, because we got this misconception that we got to have a clean slate for God to start working on us. Matter of fact, it's very contrary to, to, to the whole thought. There will be nothing to work on if you didn't have some stuff that was... Saul is in the midst of the baggage. After they get the news, this is your king, they said he was taller and stronger than everybody. And people looked at him and said, yeah, they go to the king. And of course, like most people, you had a couple people who said, who he? How he going to save us? How he going to help us? Saul was the people's choice. Principle number one, I'm going to help him real quick. Even the people's choice sometimes ain't the people's choice. The, the, listen, I'm going to drop these bars the way I got to drop them. I know that I wasn't everybody's cup of tea when I walked through this door. But I wasn't the people's choice. I heard... Let me help y'all. I'm going to let y'all into my life a little bit. Parts of my life that I don't really like too much. God allows me to hear. I cannot be in the room and hear verbatim the conversations that are had about me. I walked into some people talking to me, talking about me at work. The conversation had long been over. And when he was like, why are you acting funny? I said, because you feel like this. I 
I said, but it's okay. I knew you felt that way. I'm still going to come back tomorrow and do my job. When I walked in this door, some people said, he too young. How are he going to lead us? I'm older than him. People may mention of it every Sunday. You know I'm older than you? And I was like, thanks for telling me. <laughs> thanks for letting me know. I kind of figured it, but thanks anyway. Because what happens is when you're the people's choice, you are also not the people's choice. Everybody's not going to be on board. There were a lot of people yelling, hey, and there were some people going, no, nah, I'm cool. So be careful when you're the people's choice. Because when you're the people's choice, people start to think they control you. We voted you in here. I ain't going to go no further than that. I'm just, I've heard it. I've been in church long enough to hear the conversation. We voted them in, we can get them out. Chapter 11, Saul faces his first big assignment. There's a king by the name of uh, Nahash of Ammon who's been going around gouging out the eyes of all the Israelites. There's a king who's taken the sight of the Israelites. Let me help y'all. Israel is the chosen people. God said that he was going to cover and protect them. And an enemy is trying to take their sight. Another over the head bar. You're the chosen people. You're the chosen people. And the enemy's goal is to take your sight. Just because both of your eyes open don't mean you can see. He says to these people in, uh, where were they at? The, the Israelites in, in his part of town. He said, listen, I'm about to take over y'all situation next. He said, and unless y'all got somebody that can come save y'all, y'all eyes is going too. So they get word out. They send a word back to Gebeah and, and Saul. Saul hears about what's going on and he gets upset. He gets so upset, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went around the town and told everybody, we about to go fight. And either you fighting with me or when this is all said and done, I'm coming back and I'm killing you. Somehow he convinced <laughs> 330,000 men to go and fight. Long story short, they won. The problem is their response to winning was to give Saul the praise. I'm going to rephrase it. The problem is your response to winning is to give yourself praise, to give him or her praise. Even though I let you have your king, I still set up the wins and the losses. So whenever you are winning, I need you to be sure that you acknowledge who gave you the win. Principle number two, be careful who gets praise for your victories. Too often, I remember talking to this lady, this was probably about 15, 20 years ago. And she was talking and everything she said was I. I worked so hard for this degree and I bust my hump to get this job and I go to work, I get up and... And after talking about five minutes, I said, it's a lot of eyes in this Jesus conversation right here. It made me afraid for her. Because God was nowhere in the mix. So I start asking regular questions. Well, who got you up in the morning? Who gave you the energy to work 12-hour shifts back to back? Who sustains your mental capacity when you got to deal with all these patients and injuries? Who is it that keeps your heart pliable even after seeing all of this cold stuff? I'm just asking because you keep saying I. And what I do know about I, I got limits. I got a breaking point. So the fact that you're able to go as hard as you do, it's something bigger than I. 
I'm just trying to help. So they began to praise Saul for the victory. They then say, where are the people that was talking bad about him? Because we're going to kill them next. They got beside themselves. <laughs> Samuel said, no, ain't nobody else going to die here today. Because God, the Lord, has rescued Israel. So in other words, you only got those kills because God said it was okay. And what he's not going to let you do is turn on each other. Jesus, I just blessed this house. He's not going to allow you to turn on each other. I don't care what's going on in here. I don't care how it's playing out. God is not going to be pleased with us turning on each other. God said, you are my chosen people, which means y'all are one. So I will not tolerate you turning on each other. So let me help you out a little further. Any ill words you got against your brother and sister here, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We only speak life in here. I don't know what you do outside because I can't control your outside. But you won't speak death in here because ain't no death in here. We serve the true and risen Savior. So every gossiping tongue got to go. Here's your warning. I hope you don't move forward. I gave him the warning, bro. You know why I gave him the warning? Because God ain't pleased. He hears every conversation. He see every little side eye. He know your heart condition. How you serve him and don't like people? So Saul did what he was supposed to do. He ceremonially goes and blesses Dave, uh, Saul to be the king because that's what he was supposed to do. And he let it be known. Remember, I'm doing this because this is what God told me to do. Samuel keeps showing up to do God's work. I'm going to say it again. They missed it. That was, that was a hidden bar, Jenny. When you show up to do God's work, you should show up like God. But too often we show up to do God's work and it's too much us on it. Samuel's still upset because he understands like, yo, y'all are making a mistake. So I'm going to do it. But every chance I get, I'm going to let you know. I'm only doing this because God says so. Check this out. When you are Principle number three, I'm going to just give y'all the principle. When people appoint you, you're always in position to prove yourself. When God appoints you, there's no explanation needed. See, I can go back to my story, Sister Pat. The reason I was able to show up every Sunday while getting beat on is because I never had to open my mouth and defend myself. Be still. He didn't say be still and everything around you was roses and bubbles. He said be still. That means no matter what's going on around you, don't you move. Be still and know that I, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You ain't got to open your mouth and defend yourself. You ain't got to say nothing back. You just got to stand there and take the hits. But that's the problem. Don't nobody want to get hit. Everybody think this walk with Jesus is hit free. So you mean to tell me he can suffer on Calvary's cross, but you don't get no hits? He can get beat all night long and you don't get no hits? He got beat for something he didn't do and you don't get no hits for the stuff you do? When God calls you, all you got to do is show up. I'm going to bless somebody in the back. When God calls you, all you have to do is show up. 
Let me show y'all how I show up when God said do it. It's a certain way you walk in when you know God said do it. It's humble, but it's almost like, yeah, I expected this. I knew y'all was going to treat me bad, but I already got a vi See, I was promised a victory on the other side. So what I look like giving up my W because you had some words. Anybody watch the show Snowfall? No? It was a scene in the movie and they was talking about drugs. And the dude said, yo, man, I don't like the way he walk. I don't like the way he talk. They rode off in the car. He said, I build a million dollar business from the ground up by myself. And you ain't about to mess up my money because you don't like the way somebody walk. Let me help y'all. You ain't messing up my blessing. You ain't disrupting my W because you don't like the way I walk. I could care less what you think about me because God told me, God told me I had a W on the other side. So while you dealing with what you feel about me, I'm walking into my destiny. Some of y'all better get that in your spirit. Y'all held up off of something somebody said. I could care less. Say it to my back because I got somewhere to go. They told me they don't like my voice. You ain't singing to them. When people put you in position, you always in a position to prove yourself. Show up. So Samuel gives his farewell speech. Y'all want to hear something ironic? His farewell speech consists of the same message. He starts off his farewell speech by saying, have I not been good to y'all? Aren't my hands clean? They like, yeah. He said, well, let me tell y'all how y'all not clean. Samuel keeps showing up to do God's work. He said, I want y'all to know something. Even if God allows y'all to have this, I want y'all to know how big of a mistake it is that y'all made. I'm talking to y'all. Even though God allowed you to have it, I need you to think about the mistake you're making. See, because people think when they get the, you know how some, I could we amongst family, I could talk real. People so quick to put God on something to stamp it. It was nothing but the favor of the Lord that I got this new house and I'm thirty thousand hundred dollars in debt that I can't afford. Sweetie, that ain't the Lord. They'll give a house to anybody with the highest interest rate. God ain't give you no house to go in debt. I walked in the dealer and walked out with a car. You also walked out with a problem. I'm just trying to help because we got to stop stamping God on things that ain't got. God will allow you to do you. He will allow you to do you. The blessing is that he covers you while you're doing you. Samuel didn't even want them to forget, even though y'all got a new king now and I'm about to leave. Let me tell y'all one more time how y'all messed up. I need somebody to understand this principle number four. Always remember who's in control. I think the quickest way to operate powerless in the position is to forget who's in control. One thing I ask God daily is to keep me humble. Not for nothing more than, I don't ever want to be big-headed around this. Here's why. Because if he really laid on me all of this, it would crush me. Let me flip it. If he really laid on you everything that comes with what you think you got, it would crush you. So I keep in perspective that although I'm managing, God is in control. 
Let me help the regular working people. Work had me frustrated for the past two weeks. Every day I came home, all I could do was lay down. I want to sit down. I want to lay. I want to go to sleep. I'm just trying to get away from this. And God said, I'm just preparing you for what pastoring looks like. I know you didn't think it was the same, but you're working with these children. <laughs> you're working with these babies. And oftentimes when you walk into a church, there's a lot of grown babies in there. And that's not no knock on nobody. It's just the reality of the fact that we all are. My wife had to put me on this. We drop bars from time to time or she'll hit me with a bar at work like Pete this. I'd be like, oh, that was dope. But she sent me this thing. It was a song by Jonathan McReynolds in uh, Mally Music. And he, at the end of the song, he says, maybe when God told me to come as a baby, it was to save me. See, because when we get too grown, we know too much. So sometimes it's good to come to God in baby form. It's a clean slate. I ain't got to work through nothing. I ain't got to mess up your theology and your theory and your way of thinking, your experience. I don't have to do none of that. Come to me in baby form. This is what I know about God. Master chef. For the baby, he got milk. And for the grown-up, he got meat. Out of the same word. I need us to always remember who's in control. And this is a word of wisdom. Here's why you always remember who's in control. Because the minute you forget who's in control, you lose control. I ain't taking it back. This is why so many ministries are falling apart, are corrupt and nasty, because the pastor has become the God. People go to church because they worship the pastor. They worship the man or woman of God, and they forgot that God is the only superstar in the house of God. And because they got so big-headed, they now have forgot that they are working for God. So now everything is about them. Serve me. Give me a water. Get me a towel. Right? I need ah, any brother or sister that sees this that's in the ministry. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Because if you exalt yourself, he will humble you. And let me be clear. I don't like to see it because I don't want to see nobody hurt themselves. We should never get joy out of seeing ministries crumble. We should never get joy out of watching pastors fall. We should be praying. We should be lifting them up. But I got to tell them, this is your warning. God says, stop playing in his face. He will not be mocked. Chapter 13, where we started at, begins with telling us how old Saul was when he started. He said he was 30 when he became the king. And he reigned for 42 years. But if you really look at this, he was told right after becoming king that he had a replacement. <laughs> right after getting crowned king, he was told, yeah, you messed this up. God got somebody after his own heart that he called him to do this. But he reigned for 42 years. Just because you in position don't mean that's still your position. I'm, I'm going to help a couple people. It's a job you're going for. And you can't see yourself in the seat because there's somebody still sitting there. And I came to tell you that, do what God said do. Because when it's time, he'll clear the seat. But Israel, because you chose this, 
Y'all got to deal with this for 42 years. Because I told y'all up front, if you did this, what it was going to hit for. So now I'm going to appoint somebody else, but I'm going to let y'all get what y'all asked for. We serve a dope God. He's still doing what he want to do while letting you do what you want to do. So I'm going to appoint another king. But I'm going to let you deal with the consequences of your decision. Some of y'all are suffering right now through the consequences of your decision. And you don't blame the enemy. You blame God. And I came to tell you it was just you. But here's the blessing. God is still covering you. Because he covered Israel in the midst of their 42 years with Saul, he covered them. They didn't go unblessed. They didn't go uncovered. Matter of fact, he had more covering to do because they was under the thumb. CCC, I am blessing y'all right now. You were under the thumb. And he said, deal with it. I'm working something out in Maryland. Y'all don't know nothing about it. But stay under the thumb. And you ever wonder why God kept CCC through a pandemic? I want y'all to really think about this, right? I think about this all the time, more than I probably should. I always be like, well, God, with all the churches falling apart, during the pandemic, how and why did you keep CCC? And he said to me very clearly, because I got work for them to do. Hold up, that ain't the shout. He said, y'all been here all this time and y'all haven't done what I asked y'all to do yet. And one thing I know about God, we don't get to forfeit his plan. So he maintains you through the nonsense just so you can do what he told you to do from the beginning. Mm. So God shares pretty much with, with, with Saul because if y'all remember the beginning of the scripture, he said to him, he said, um, I need you to go down here, wait seven days, I'm going to come, and I will give you further instructions. Saul begins to see his army fall apart, so he makes an executive decision. Go get me some, some, some cattle and some burnt, so I can make these burnt offerings, and then we can go into war. Let me help y'all. The last thing you ever want to do is go into a spiritual fight without the Holy Spirit. You ever talk about getting ate alive? Try to fight a spiritual fight in your flesh. It will eat you alive. I'm not telling you this because I think it. I'm telling you because I lived it. I fought a spiritual fight physically for three years. And I lost every day. I got beat up every day. And I couldn't understand why I was depressed. I ate myself to over 300 pounds. And I was like, what is happening? God said, at some point, you're going to have to look to the corner and tap your coach. Because you've been fighting this all wrong. Let me help y'all. The enemy is trying to steal your spirit. You are in a custody battle every day you get up. <laughs> your father and his adversary are fighting over you every day. This is why it's important that you get in prayer when you wake up in the morning. This is why it's important that you study the word so you have something to stand on. This is why it's important that you know God for yourself. Because the enemy wakes up every day, I'm going to get him today. And I ain't even going to do nothing new. I'm going to just keep doing what I've been doing until it get on their nerves. Because he understands that I got a breaking point. He tells, he tells, go get me a burnt offering. We're going to burn this offering. We're going to start. Right after he does the burnt offering, Samuel shows up like he said. And he said, what did you do? Oh, well, you was taking too long. And because, you know, I'm the king, I made a decision. 
I told y'all last week, was that last week? One of these weeks. I said, even your pastor got a pastor. Everybody got somebody they got an answer to or should be talking to. Bible says always have seeking good, wise counsel, right? He made a self-decision with no thought from anybody else. Samuel said, man, that was foolish. So now that you did this, God has already picked somebody else to replace you because you've made this one decision. Let me help y'all, and this is for young people. One decision could cost you the rest of your life. I watched in the news this week two young men who decided to pull out a gun and shoot somebody, 15 and 17. They're being tried as adults. They will spend the rest of their life in prison. And the question I know they're wondering is, was it worth it? Was this beef worth the rest of my life? If I see light again, I'll be an old man with gray hair. But I'm a kid. When God gives you instructions, follow the instructions to the T. Don't do like most men do. And fellas, I'm talking about us because I can. Don't look at the box and go, yeah, I could put that together and never read the instructions. When you finish putting together the table, you got extra screws. But it ain't come with no extra screws. But that's what we do when God gives instructions and we start taking out the things that we don't particularly agree with. Or we start in certain things that we think are better. We come up with an object that's not strong or sturdy. We come up with something that's not trustworthy. You come up with something that can't stand the test of time. Principle number five, let me help you. Time in doesn't allow for rule changes. Let me, let me explain that. Time in doesn't allow for rule changes. See, before we get a thing, we super humble. God could tell us anything. That's right, save the Lord. I'll, yes, whatever you say, do. I'm a follow. Woo. The minute we get it, we start talking back to God. Oh, I, I ain't see it that way. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, God, I was, I'll do that after I do this. I, I'll get to that. The rules were the rules. God gave him rules, Mama S. And he changed the rules because he was now the king. Let me help y'all. I am now the pastor, but God still got the final say. I don't, I don't get to do what I want to do because that's what I want to do. I got to do what God say do, no matter how it makes you or me feel. And just because I got time in don't mean I get to change the rules. Y'all taking too long. I'm going to sacrifice this much. Don't worry about it. We'll have somebody replace you. <laughs> I need people to understand something. We still talk about connectivity issues. Samuel is connected to God. He has an intimacy with God that he wishes Israel had. He sees the disconnect between Israel and God. And he struggles with it because he cares about them. If somebody in your house is disconnected from God, you shouldn't be judging them. You should be concerned and praying that God bring them back. Because I want to see everybody in my house win. So no, I'm not going to keep leaving my kid on the couch. In my house growing up, it didn't matter what you did Saturday night. Sleepy and all. You getting up out of here. It wasn't an option. Matter of fact, in my house, we ain't have options because we ain't pay bills. And I know this ain't the old day, but it's some old stuff that need to come back. Oh, I'm tired. I'm asleep in the day. You're going to sleep in that back row because you're going to church. Couldn't go to sleep either. My grandma had, had this slap. She kept her fingers loose. So it felt like you got hit more than once, but it was one time. And I'll be like,
But I need y'all to understand how detrimental it is to operate powerless in a position because you didn't follow the rules. Let, let me button this up for y'all. God gave him the anointing. He covered. They asked for a king. God anointed him. God appointed him. He gave him the Holy Spirit. Saul just did everything he could to not operate in it. God gave you a position. And let me help you. I ain't talking about church positions. I'm talking about positions in life. He made you a mother. He made you a father. He made you a sibling, an auntie, an uncle. He gave you a position. He also gave you the spirit to operate in the position. And when you don't operate in the position properly, it's because you forgot that God gave you that position. I know this is not making sense. I'm trying to help it make sense. Let me help it make sense. Anything you're doing, you're only doing it because God says so. I got to take it out of the room in context of ministry because some people are like, well, I don't do nothing in ministry. That's a problem in itself. We'll talk about that later. But you have a position somewhere. And the last thing I ever want you to do is operate powerless in your position. So here's how you stay in power. Recognize who's in control. Follow his instructions. Do what he says, whether you like it or not. Go where he says go, whether you want to or not. Stop thinking that ministry is going to operate at your convenience. I could have walked away and sat down right off of that. We got this thing in church that nothing can move if it don't work with my schedule. Let me help you real quick. Sister Tamika, I'm going to help him with this one bar. Anything you put before God, he will move it. So keep telling me about your job. Keep telling, and don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to go quit because we can't pay your bills. But what I'm saying is you got some time to give God his. And if you really sit back and think about it, that time is occupied with something else. So, in order to move forward and stay connected, remember who you serve. Like Sister Pat told me day after day, years ago, don't blow your witness. See, situations come to disrupt you and to set you off. Because if somebody watching and all they're waiting for you to do is cuss somebody out. See, I told you. What I'm going to church with her for, she's still cussing people out. Let me help you. Everybody in here still cuss. Whether you say it out loud or not. Some of y'all cuss with your face. You too. I'm just trying to help them. I need us to stay connected. I need us to remember God is in control. God gave you the assignment. But better than that, he's covering you. He is blessing you. He is keeping you. And all he ever asked for was that you serve me in spirit and truth. God is in a one-sided relationship with us every day. And I'm surprised he just keeps coming back. Because most of us walk away when we feel like it's one way. Bro, I know what I'm talking about. Start not talking to your lady. Start treating her funny. She looking for an exit plan. We don't talk to God for weeks, months. And when we pick up the line, he right there. You can't get that from nobody else in the world. Y'all can shout next week. My prayer is that this series has been a blessing to you. Don't let them infringe on your fruit. 
Understand that it costs too much to carry you. When I move, you move. And don't get caught down with OPP. Okay.